This is a letter from uh, the AA Grapevine, January 1958, written by Bill Wilson. I think that many Ulsters who have put our AA booze cure to severe but successful test still find they often lack emotional sobriety. Perhaps they will be the spearhead of the next major development in AA, the development of, of a much more real maturity and balance, which is to say humility in our relations with ourselves, with our fellows, and with God. Those adolescent urges that so many of us have, have for top approval, perfect security, and perfect romance, urges quite appropriate to age 17, prove to be an impossible way of life when we are at age 47 or 57. Since AA began, I've taken immense wallops in all these areas because of my failure to grow up emotionally and spiritually. My God, how painful it is to keep demanding the impossible and how very painful to discover finally that all along we have had the cart before the horse. Then comes the final agony of seeing how awfully wrong we have been, but still finding ourselves unable to get off the emotional merry-go-round. How to translate a right mental conviction into a right emotional result. And so it is into easy, happy, and good living. Well, it's not only the neurotics problem, it's the problem of life itself for all of us who have got to the point of real willingness to hew to right principles in all our affairs. Even then, as we hew away, peace and joy may still elude us. That's the place so many of us AA oldsters have come to. And it's a hell of a spot, literally. How shall our unconsciousness, from which so many of our fears, compulsions, and phony aspirations still stream, be brought into line with what we actually believe, know, and want? How to convince our dumb, raging, and hidden Mr. Hyde becomes our main task. I've recently come to believe this can be achieved. I believe so because I begin to see many benighted ones, folks like you and me, commencing to get results. Last autumn, several years back, depression, having no real rational cause at all, almost took me to the cleaners. I began to be scared that I was in for another long chronic spell. Considering the grief I've, I've had with, with depressions, it wasn't a bright prospect. <clears throat> I kept asking myself, why can't the 12 steps work to release depression? By the hour, I stared at the St. Francis prayer. It's better to comfort than to be comforted. Here was the formula all right, but why didn't it work? Suddenly I realized what the matter was. <clears throat> My basic flaw had always been dependence, almost absolute dependence on people or circumstances to supply me with prestige, security, and the like. Failing to get these things according to my perfectionist dreams and specifications, I had fought for them. And when, defeated, and when defeat came, so did my depression. There wasn't a chance of making the outgoing love of St. Francis, a work, workable and joyous way of life, until these fatal and almost absolute dependencies were cut away. Because I have, over the years, undergone a little spiritual development, the absolute quality of these frightful dependencies had never before been so starkly revealed. Rein, reinforced by what by what grace I could secure in prayer, I found I had to exert every ounce of will and action to cut off these faulty emotional dependencies. The dependencies upon people, upon AA, indeed upon any set of circumstances whatsoever. Then could I be free to love as, as Francis had. Emotional 
and instructional satisfactions I saw were really the extra dividends of having love, offering love, and expressing love appro appropriate to each relation of life. Plainly, I could not avail myself of God's love until I was able to offer it back to Him by loving others as He would have me. I couldn't possibly do that so long as I was victimized by false dependencies. For my dependency meant demand, a demand for the possession and control of people and the conditions surrounding me. While those words, absolute demand, may look like a gimmick, they were the, they were the ones that helped to trigger my release into my present degree of stability and quietness of mind, qualities which I am now trying to consolidate by offering love to others regardless of the return to me. This seems to be the primary healing circuit, an outgoing love of God's creation and his people by means of which we avail ourselves of his love for us. It is most clear that the current can't flow until our paralyzing dependencies are broken and broken at depth. Only then can we possibly have a glimmer of what adults of what adult love really is. Spiritual calculus, you say? Not a bit of it. Watch any AA of six months working with a new 12-step case. If the case says to the devil with you, the 12-stepper only smiles and turns to another case. He doesn't feel frustrated or rejected. If his next case responds and in turn starts to give love and attention to other alcoholics, yet gives none back to him, the sponsor is happy about it anyway. He still doesn't feel rejected. Instead, he rejoices that his one-time prospect is sober and happy. And if his next following case turns out out in later time to be his best friend or romance, then the sponsor is most joyful. But he well knows that happiness is a byproduct, the extra dividend of giving without any demand for a return. The real stabilizing thing for him was having, having and offering love to that strange drunk on his doorstep. That was Francis at work powerful and practical, minus depend dependency, and minus demand. In the first six months of my own sobriety, I worked hard with many alcoholics. Not a one responded. Yet this work kept me sober. It wasn't a question of those alcoholics giving me anything. My stability came out of trying to give, not out, not out, not out of demanding that I receive. Thus, I think I can work out with emotional sobriety. If we examine every disturbance we have, great or small, we will find at the root of it some unhealthy dependency and its consequent, consequent unhealthy demand. Let us, with God's help, continually surrendering, surrender to these hobbling demands. Then we can be set free to live in love we may then be able to 12-step ourselves and others into emotional sobriety. Of course, I haven't offered you a really new idea, only a gimmick that has started to unhook several of my own hexes at depth. Nowadays, my brain no longer races compulsively in either elation, grandiosity, or depression. I have been given a quiet place in bright sunshine. Again, that's uh, Bill Wilson from the Grapevine, January 1958.